KTLA's Live Longer and Better Week continues with a reminder that we must remember our history or we might be doomed to repeat it. <laughs> Thus the basis of a new book titled 100 of the Worst Ideas in History. Yeah. Today we're going to look at four of the worst medical ideas. Joining us, authors Michael Smith and Eric uh, Kasem. Uh, thanks for joining Good us. Good morning. Great Thank to be you. here. Glad a lot of fun. Um, you, you're looking at everything. Uh, everything. Pop culture, yeah. sports, technology, but let's right. talk uh, about medicine. How did you put all this stuff together? Well, Eric and I are both writers. I run my own advertising company. And Eric's a former speechwriter for the first Bush administration, uh, New York Times, uh, you know, Washington Post. And uh, we deal with ideas all day long. Mm -hmm. So we have a great deal of empathy for what it takes to come up with a good idea and a fair amount of sympathy when that seemingly good idea goes terribly wrong. So you can imagine we had hundreds of really yeah. bad ideas. Right, right. But we boiled it down to the essence. So you might say this is the creme de la creme of oh, truly horrible excellent. ideas. Okay, well, wait. let's get started, shall sure. we? Okay, we're going to look at our first bad medical idea in history bloodletting done and, by your barber. <laughs> and you asked for this. You wanted this. We, we want, people wanted this. We call this the cure only Dracula could love. <laughs> and it goes back to the ancient Egyptians. And this treatment carried through right uh, into the 1800s and into the early 1900s. So back in those days, when you were sick, you made an appointment to go see the Doctor. Barber. The barber. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> the same gentleman, or not so gentleman, who cut your hair would turn you upside down, hang you by your ankles, and cut open an artery to let the blood flow out. Yeah. Wow. This is real. It was believed back in those days that these nasty things called humors mm -hmm. uh, made you sick. And when they got out of balance, you needed to let some of your blood out and thereby let the humors out, and you would feel better. Now, while there's really no evidence that bloodletting helps a sick person feel better, there's plenty of evidence that it helps a sick person feel dead. Yeah. <laughs> bad idea. So, the end result. Bad idea. Yeah. Over time, oh, it fell man. out of favor, as you might have guessed. Uh, and, uh, you know, over the years, uh, you know, phlebotomists still are, are doing some bloodletting today that's in a controlled medical environment. Right. And outside the barber shop, the traditional barber pole, yes. it, looks like it said, a can, yeah, it looks like a candy can. cane, red, yeah, yeah, red yeah, and white. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's said to hark back the red is supposed to be blood, and the white is the tourniquet that the barber would put on you oh. after a bloodletting session. Who huh. knew? All right, let's go to the next uh, bad medical idea in history. Uh, dental fillings with mercury. Well, this goes back, and I'll take this one, and Eric can jump in too, but uh, <laughs> this goes back to 1895, mm -hmm. and there's a Chicago dentist named G.V. Black. And he's searching for the better way to fill decayed teeth. So he comes upon what he thinks is the perfect solution, silver. It's hard, it's strong, it lasts a long time. Then he comes up with a really bad idea, to mix it in an amalgam form with mercury. Mm. Now, the problem, it, to make it more pliable and easier to insert into the, into the tooth. The problem is that mercury, as we know, is a toxic substance, more toxic than arsenic. So it results in, it can result in brain tremors and loss of memory and seizures. So for the next hundred years, the, the, uh, the American Dental Association signs on to this because it's easy for dentists to use, not looking at what it does to the patient. Wow. So yeah. all of us now for a hundred years now are, are still walking around. The bad news is that most of us have what the EPA found was more mercury in our mouths than the EPA allows in the environment. Oh, for so fish and for good. air and for, yeah. for We're telling surface. pregnant women not to eat fish because of the mercury right. Right. and their whole mouth is Meanwhile, full of Meanwhile, they're mercury. putting it right So what's the yes. point, right? Yes. Trial and yeah. error, I suppose, huh? Yes. Okay, this third bad medical idea in history, a medicinal syrup made with cocaine. Yeah, in the book we call this the, the dental health product that could rot your teeth. But really, <laughs> this, this began basically in 1886. There was a pharmacist in Atlanta named John Pemberton, mm -hmm. and he invented a new medicine, and it was sweet so people would like it, and it was full of of cocaine, of course. They apparently <laughs> loved it. Yeah. They loved yes, that. they loved it. Uh, it was meant to help your stomach and sore teeth and migraines and everything. It didn't work, <laughs> so he couldn't, it didn't, nobody bought it, and he was disappointed. Meanwhile, down the street, some soda jerk mixes it with carbonated water. People kind of like this medicine when it sparkles, and it became a fun drink. Okay, yeah, they call so, it a fun drink. Yes, yeah, wow. so there were no soft He's, drinks. He back sells this days. idea off for a couple hundred bucks, okay? That's the second bad idea. First is a medical product that doesn't work, the second is <laughs> selling this. This idea off because it became Coca-Cola, yeah. which is the best-selling product in history. Oh 20 million oh a day, God. 7 That's billion amazing. a year. And 
Well, with Coke coming out with the Coke Life, the green. They used to be red, but now they're green. So not only is Coke good for your health, it's good for the environment. <laughs> so it really did, because I've heard that for years. Yeah, that the original that Coke. Myth. Uh, yeah. No, it had but cocaine it in it in the beginning. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, some people say, right, Eric, that it still has cocaine in it. That's the urban myth that has uh, perpetuated right. to right. this day. But it, does, it doesn't. Yeah. And then stuff. with yeah. Ebola, yeah. that's the fourth idea. Ebola is frightening, very frightening. Yeah. Okay, But it's not the first virus that's had people running scared. Mm. Yeah. Back in 1918, the battlefields of World War I swept across probably the disease of the worst disease ever. It was called the Spanish mm -hmm. flu epidemic, mm -hmm. right? It swept off the battlefields around the earth. There were cities in America, like in Philadelphia, where no families were alive on the whole street. 675,000 Americans yeah. died during it was a that ghost pandemic. Town. Okay, this was so terrifying that people were looking for cures. So the bad idea is a called cupping. So you heat up a glass mm -hmm. cup and it creates suction. It pulls the illness, the disease out Alleg of you. Allegedly. Okay. Right. Yeah, of course it doesn't really work. <laughs> so this disease runs its course. It kills over th between 30 and 50 million people. This is more than the entire human population of the wow. earth at the time of the Black Plague. Wow. So this was a big deal and a very bad idea. So cupping, a bad yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are fascinating and well, if you'd I mean, like yeah. to meet these two, Michael Smith and Eric Kaysen, and the book wouldn't? signing, yeah. who wouldn't? <laughs> Sunday, December 14th at the last bookstore on Spring Street in Los Angeles. The book available everywhere. For more information, go to our website, ktla.com. So nice to meet you. Yeah, hey, thank you out for a beer after. Be <laughs> yes, best bar talk ever. I like yeah, that. it would. Thank Great to be here. Thank you. Thank you.